Hi everyone, welcome back to Feeding Raven Doodles, a pet parent's guide to nutrition. Today's topic is how to read a pet food label. I've broken this video up into two parts just because it's very long and very important and I don't want to skip over anything. Reading a pet food label is a very important process and learning how to read the label systematically and objectively is going to be very important for you as a pet owner because it's gonna help you see through the marketing tactics that are on the back and help you focus on just the important aspects of the label. There are very few truly important pieces of information that you will find on the pet food label and you might be surprised to learn that they're not the ones that most people focus on. A pet food label is essentially a legal document. It has to follow guidelines that are set out by the Association of American Feed Control Officials, also known as AFCO, as well as the United States Food and Drug Administration, FDA, and your state and local governments. Because it is a legal document, there are very few pieces of information on the pet food label that are going to tell you anything that's going to sh that should sway your opinion on whether you should buy the food or not. Using a pet food label to decide on a diet is a very poor decision because nothing on that label is going to give you any indication of the quality of the diet or of the company that makes the pet food. There's so much more information that you need to know about the pet food company and about the diet that you cannot find on the label. So this is why using the pet food label to choose a diet is actually a pretty poor decision. Pet food companies are also extremely good at marketing and they're going to do everything in their power to help you make the decision to buy their pet food. So ultimately you need to know how to find the important pieces of information on the pet food label and break it down and figure out what should sway your opinion and what shouldn't. The first thing you're going to want to find when you pick up a bag of pet food is the brand name. Who makes the pet food? So usually this is going to be found on the front of the bag. It's going to be fairly large and easily visible. You're going to find the pet food company's name and logo. This is important because when you're choosing a new pet food, the first step is going to be to pick a reliable pet food manufacturer, like we talked about in How to Pick a Pet Food Part 1. It's there simply for legal reasons, but it is also there for you so that you know who's making the pet food. The next thing you're going to want to find when picking a new diet is the net quantity statement. So this is going to be found in small text on the front of the bag or can down by the bottom usually. And it's just going to be a statement of how many pounds and kilograms are in the food if it's a dry diet or how many ounces and grams are in the food if it's a canned diet. So this is just help for, helpful information for you to know when you are choosing between two different foods, maybe in terms of price. So it'll tell you how many dollars to pounds um, the food costs, and that might be a deciding factor when you're choosing a new pet food. And it is there just for legal reasons, but again, it is also useful for you to know as a consumer. The next thing you're gonna wanna be aware of when you're picking a new diet is what species is that food intended to feed? So if you're looking for food for your cat, you don't want to accidentally pick out a food that's labeled for dogs, right? So you're going to want to find the words either dog food or cat food on that label. And then there should also be a picture of a dog or a cat on the label as well. Make sure you don't focus too much on the breed of the pet that's pictured on the label because a lot of diets aren't breed specific. So just knowing the species that the food is intended to feed is sufficient. It is there for legal purposes, but again, it is very important for the consumer to know because if you did feed a dog cat food or a cat dog food, the pet could have nutrient deficiencies or excesses that could be detrimental to their health. The next thing you're going to want to check out when you're reading a pet food label is the name of the food. So when pet food companies name their foods, they're gonna use certain descriptors, terms, and phrases that are actually heavily legally regulated. So they're gonna use usually an ingredient that's found in their pet food, and this is gonna to help to appeal to you as the, the pet owner when you're trying to make a decision on what food to buy. So if you see salmon dog food, or beef and liver dog food, or tuna entree cat food, these are all going to be those indicators. So each of these 
terms has a legal meaning that is actually regulated. So let's go through some examples. You might see a can of dog food that says 100% chicken. 100% is going to tell you that this entire diet is made up of nothing but chicken once water is taken out of the diet. So diets that are made up of 100% one ingredient are not complete and balanced and they should only be used as a treat or a food topper. This is because if it's 100% one ingredient, it can't have the necessary vitamins and minerals and other nutrients that should be present in the animal's diet. So if this diet were to be fed as the sole source of nutrition to the pet, the pet would become nutrient deficient. Another example would be beef dog food. So if a diet is described as just one ingredient with no 100% in front of it, that means that the diet is 95% this ingredient when the water is taken out. So if the diet says beef dog food, that means it's 95% beef without water. This does allow for the manufacturer to add other ingredients and sources of nutrition that will make the diet complete and balanced. Another example is duck and liver cat food or veal and sweet potato dog food. So using the term and in between two ingredients is going to tell you that both of these ingredients will make up 95% of the diet once water is removed and the first ingredient listed is going to take up more of the diet than the second ingredient. So again, it's just like the beef dog food that we talked about, but two of the ingredients are gonna make up 95% of the diet. If you see a diet that's described with terms like entree, dinner, formula, or platter, this is going to tell you that the diet is actually only 25% of the ingredient that precedes these terms. So for example, tuna formula cat food or salmon entree dog food. These diets are actually only 25% tuna or salmon once water is removed. Another example would be cat food with turkey. So the with is going to tell you that the diet only has 3% turkey once water is removed. It is made with turkey, but the turkey only makes up 3% of the diet. And then last but not least, we have flavored foods. So if we have, for example, bacon flavored dog food, the term flavor just means that some ingredient in that food is going to be contributing to the flavor of bacon. So there's no percentage requirement for flavors. It just means that the food actually has to taste like the ingredient. So these phrases are regulated um, by the FDA and state and local governments, and they do have to follow definitions that are set by AFCO. So these phrases are also used for marketing purposes to appeal to you, the pet owner, because when you see that ingredient, that sounds great, right? Chicken, that's what I want in my dog's food. Chicken's a great source of protein. Or beef and liver, those sound like great ingredients that I would want to see in my dog's food. But if you look and analyze what the term actually is broken down to mean, your dog could be getting, or your cat could be getting actually less percentage wise than you might think. So um, just be aware of these rules. Another thing you're gonna see on the front of that pet food label and on the back is marketing. Now marketing is one of my favorite topics and I could do an entire video on marketing alone which I will, um, but I just wanted to touch on it here because it is a huge aspect of the pet food label. So like I said before, marketing is actually not regulated by the FDA and many of the definitions that pet food companies use in marketing do not have any definitions that are outlined by AFCO. So some of the things that you'll see in terms of marketing are going to be phrases or photographs that are going to help sway your opinion in buying that pet food. Some phrases that you're going to see, um, I'm just gonna list them off here. Um, organic, natural, non-GMO, holistic, grain-free, gluten-free, human grade, human quality, high protein, gourmet, high quality, premium, prey-based feeding, biologically appropriate. None of these terms have any 
legal definition and they are not regulated whatsoever in the pet food industry. Small caveat I will mention is if a pet food company does want certain ingredients to be certified uh, USDA organic or human grade, they do have to pay the USDA to come out and inspect their facilities. Other than that, none of these terms have any basis in science, they have no legal definition, and they do not tell you anything about the quality of the diet or its ingredients. There is absolutely no scientific evidence that foods bearing these claims have superior nutrition of any sort. Another thing that you might see in terms of marketing is pictures of meats, fruits, vegetables, or other tasty morsels on that pet food label. Um, and these are strictly to appeal to you, the pet owner. So these pictures are not regulated by the FDA. Um, they don't even legally have to match the ingredients that are in the pet food. So there is no correlation between that juicy steak that you see on the front of the pet food bag and what's actually going into your pet's food. It also tells you nothing about the quality of whatever the ingredients are that are in your pet food, no matter how good they look. So just keep this in mind and please don't use photographs that you see on the front of the pet food bag to determine whether or not you're going to buy that food. Marketing is on pet food bags for the pet food manufacturer's purpose only. They're extremely smart. They're very good at marketing. They have whole teams dedicated to marketing this food to you. So while certain colors and font sizes might be regulated by governing authorities, they ultimately don't control this marketing. And Companies who use lots of this fluff on their bags, lots of pretty pictures and appealing phrases and slogans, they put a ton of their money, of their revenue and profit back into marketing. So their ultimate goal is of course to sell you food. Um, and they're going to appeal to you, the pet owner, in any way possible. So when they put much of their profit back into marketing though, this is gonna say a lot about the company itself because you're paying for the marketing, not the quality of the food. So where the company could be putting their profits into say quality control or employing board certified veterinary nutritionists, they're actually putting it back into marketing, which could be a poor decision. So one thing you're going to wanna to keep in mind is to choose a pet food company that has a reliable manufacturer so like we talked about in How to Pick a Pet Food, part one. And another thing is just try and see through that marketing. Just, you, you see these terms, these pretty pictures, these catchy phrases, and ultimately you just have to ignore them because they tell you nothing about the quality of the diet or the reliability of that manufacturer. So you have to be the smart consumer and say, listen, pet food company, I'm not taking your marketing to heart, I'm not listening to what you have to say in terms of how great our food is or all these wonderful things that we are marketing on our bag. You don't care about any of it. All you care about is, is the diet going to be effective for your pet and is it produced by a reliable manufacturer? Thanks so much for watching part one of how to read a pet food label. Keep on the lookout for part two, the back of the bag next time. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. Leave any comments down below if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos. And also don't forget to check out that video description where I'm going to include some resources and extra reading material for you. Next time we'll be talking about how to read a pet food label part two, the back of the bag. Oh, say bye Raven.